so nice of you to take out your time and come to this interview. Uh, we are extremely, extremely grateful for that. Uh, hey, Abdullah, it's a pleasure to be here. Yeah. Uh, so basically, um, I would like to know firstly, like, uh, more about you as in uh, um, everything about you, basically. If you could just shortly hmm. introduce yourself. Huh? Yeah, okay. I mean, if I'm just summing it up, I'm a final year from Tripoli. Mm-hmm. And uh, currently going to the same college as you guys, NITW, mm-hmm. of course. Uh, yeah, besides that, I recently got an admission into one of my top priority colleges, which is Columbia University for the electrical and ele- uh, electrical engineering program, mm-hmm. where my interests are also towards computer science and electrical engineering. Mm-hmm. And yeah, so that that's what I'm doing this interview for, to mm-hmm. help uh, any future aspirants out with it as well. Yeah, thank you. Uh, so like uh, starting with the interview, uh, the first question would be like, uh, why specifically did you want to uh, pursue masters as in uh, how did you choose your field? How did you go about this whole process? Which university or program did you, you know, finalize or are you just still waiting for some results or something and what is going on? Yeah, well, as for the second part of the question, well, as as far as I can remember, at least, I've always wanted to be a serial entrepreneur. Mm-hmm. Like someone who can make something close to the amazing inventions I've grown up watching as a child in TV shows like Dexter's Laboratory mm-hmm. or cool movies like Back to the Future. Mm-hmm. So I've always really wanted to make something that at least remotely comes close to that. So Excellent. even though it's a really abstract goal and it's really high and ambitious, it became clear to me that I require a lot more time as well as exposure in order to actually reach that goal. So mm. it is for these two reasons primarily that I wanted to do my master's. I wanted some more time and exposure in order to polish up my skills and improve myself as an engineer with as many different yeah. tools as possible. Uh, and as for my field, I had applied for the electrical and computer engineering program for most of my applications. Mm-hmm. And I had finalized in Columbia University quite early in early March, I guess. Mm-hmm. So I'm not waiting for any other applications. Like I that's find that not quite early on. Okay, okay, that's really nice. Uh, okay, so basically for masters and like college admissions, etc. When should I really start? Uh, you know, preparing for my college admissions and like how do I go about improving my profile? Which aspects do I focus more on, etc. Well, as for the time, I don't really think there's a definite answer for this, if I'm being completely Mm -hmm. frank, because it varies based on the individual. Like, I know people who have spent all year preparing for their GRE and TOEFL exams because they saw that as a much higher priority for themselves. Mm -hmm. And I know people who spent very little time. Like, me, for example, I spent around two weeks or a little little more than two weeks preparing for my GRE and like a week preparing for my TOEFL. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, I I wasn't really as engrossed towards the exams Mm -hmm. as some others might be but i definitely think that uh, it varies based on the individual of course mm-hmm. so yeah and as for how to improve my profile i from from my first year onwards i've always been participating in industrial internships right from mm-hmm. the get-go of my summer in my first year and i've always been looking for as many different opportunities as possible both from college and off campus to try to improve myself as an engineer i didn't really look at it from a profile perspective mm-hmm. like I was just looking for different opportunities to polish up my ideas as I mentioned before my goal was to be a serial entrepreneur someday mm-hmm. so I just needed as much exposure as possible to reach that goal so Excellent. I'd be doing industrial internships I've, I've done uh, I've participated in a few international competitions for it mm-hmm. and I've even participated in some research internships and um, international research internships as well Achoo. Besides this, I mean, from my first year onwards, I've been really excited to learn as much as possible, even stuff from mm-hmm. outside the curriculum. So I'd often be doing these online courses. Like, uh, I think by now, I've probably completed on over 16 online courses as well, okay. since I was really excited to learn as much as possible. I mm-hmm. wanted to get as many different tools as possible into my tool chest, mm-hmm. again, to reach my goals. So I just say that focus on improving and polishing your skills as an engineer since i mean mm-hmm. you never know exactly what you're interested in so just have a wide area of interest in engineering and i'm pretty sure you have an interesting tool just towards the end of it and consequently an imp- impressive profile eventually Achha. okay that's okay that's nice um so like 
what what kind of strategy did you follow while selecting universities uh, while applying uh, which university did you select and uh, and uh, why did you choose the universities you did uh, like the country wise and region wise hmm. um well i definitely think that the region you apply to matters to an extent i mean college prestige is only going to get you to a certain extent i feel like um, more than the college prestige it does matter which uh, area you are applying towards and what you're interested in because when i was doing my college applications as well i had gotten a few uh, admission into some really good colleges outside the us as well mm-hmm. like some which were even close to the top 10 as well mm-hmm. but i didn't really get into these uh, universities because i wanted to pursue my serial entrepreneurship goals starting at the us mm-hmm. although it's not certain like if i'm planning on settling down there I'd still like to uh, test my skills out in the US before progressing to the next step. That's so true. it definitely matters based on when you look at it from a country perspective it definitely matters mm-hmm. and it matters even from a state perspective to an extent because That's I definitely preferred uh, states like New York over states like Georgia I mean Atlanta and uh, California. Mm-hmm. So I definitely wanted to go more towards uh, New York as well for my mm-hmm. ideas and my startup culture. So it does matter to that extent. And mm-hmm. as for shortlisting your colleges i i mainly applied to colleges which were only in the top 100 mm-hmm. and uh, yeah my i was mainly looking to top 100 colleges which were in the us and besides ranking ranking only matter to an extent for me like uh, mm-hmm. i saw i i kind of divided into three categories like mm-hmm. below 50 uh, below top 50 top, but still top 100 top 50 and then top 10 That's and right. although although uh, it does matter to an extent from those categories i i definitely think that after you cross the 50 mark they're all more or less the same acha so yeah you should definitely pick it based on your personal preference after mm-hmm. that okay since colombia for example had a really flexible curriculum for electrical engineering when i applied to the electrical engineering program at colombia university they have the option of taking more than half half their credits like half the course curriculum mm-hmm. outside electrical engineering So Achha. you could literally learn electrical engineering while also opting for CSE ah. courses, for example. Like if you you can cherry pick the courses from the CSE curriculum, mm-hmm. from mechanical engineering, from chemistry, physics. It just goes on and on. So because of that mm-hmm. flexible curriculum, along with the area which I'm in, I I definitely preferred Columbia University over the others. Acha, okay. Um. if you could highlight on the application procedure and like required documents and uh, if they even took an interview of you or some of some sorts in the selection procedure mm-hmm. well the general documents which all of the applicants tend to ask for would be uh, a statement of purpose of course mm-hmm. uh, some some essay questions which pertain based on the college like mm-hmm. they just want to know that you've done the research on their college and the course and you actually care about the their college besides that they ask you for your resume or cv as well mm-hmm. uh, your transcripts your gre and tofl scores of course mm-hmm. and along with that letters of recommendation of course yeah mm-hmm. those those are the main reasons which, the main things which they focus on That's and true. the rest varies based on the college application of course um mm-hmm. uh, columbia university for example did take an interview in their uh, application procedure but mm-hmm. this interview was more focused on personal questions rather than the uh theoretical or Achha. technical questions because that's already been tested in your other stuff mm-hmm. in your are, other application material are they like uh, the questions are they like why do you want to come here so, some sort oh, of oh yeah of course and um, statement of, of course they ask you like why do you want to come here mm-hmm. but besides that i mean for me i'll tell you how the interview procedure went it basically mm-hmm. went like um once you get into the interview you get in completely blind they give you a 3 mm-hmm. minute time limit and once they give you the 3 minute time limit they show you new questions which you've seen before like on the spot which you have mm-hmm. to answer mm-hmm. so these questions of course they can pertain to general questions like uh, why do you want to come to this program in particular why this college mm-hmm. and besides that they can even ask you some uh, weird questions like weird as in weird in a good way like okay. uh, if there was one person who's passed away who you'd want to meet who would it be and why Achha. questions like that or they might ask you questions like okay so what what's your definition of success Oh, okay. stuff like that. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, they can ask you just the most arbitrary questions, and they, it's more of a test to see how you present yourself more than anything else. It's not like they. Mm-hmm. I mean, I'm not sure about it, but I don't think that they'll decide based on whether someone's given the right answer for something. They just want to know your mm-hmm. personality, so you can express yourself in any way you'd like to. Acha. Okay. Yeah. 
uh and like did you give eyelids or toffel and why did you choose oh, that uh, mm-hmm. yeah i gave the toffel uh, exam primarily because like i mentioned earlier my applications mm-hmm. were more focused towards the us mm-hmm. and the few international universities that did apply to outside the us were accepting toffel as well mm-hmm. so it just seemed like the logical choice at that time acha 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 uh and like uh, writing the essays for application purpose how did you go about the whole thing mm, well i honestly did not spend that much time on my essays as well because i kind of already knew, like most of the essays kind of focus on exactly what you want to do what your goals are mm-hmm. and i already had a clear cut answer for those answers before the essay so Achha. when i was writing the essay it was more about just writing what i already know about myself Mm-hmm. So it didn't take me as long. Like most people, when they write their essay, they tend to focus on the question and actually think about it, That's because right. they haven't figured out the answers yet, right? Mm-hmm. Like they look at uh, your statement of purpose and they'd be asking, okay, why do you want to come to this college? And a lot of people haven't really considered their reasons for why they want to do their masters before they look at their statement of purpose. Okay. So when they look at their statement of purpose, it takes them a long period of time to figure out exactly how to articulate themselves mm-hmm. onto this uh, text document. So because I had a clear cut idea of that I just kind of wrote the statement of purpose quite quickly. Acha 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 okay. Yeah. That makes sense. Uh and uh, about these programs how long are they and then what's the cost range? Well most most programs are around 1 and 1/2 to 2 years in duration for the MS. Mm-hmm. Um more pertaining more tending towards the 1.5 years uh, duration mm-hmm. and the cost for these colleges definitely varies based on the college like okay. ivy league colleges in particular tend to cost a lot more than the other colleges okay. uh i think a good average including uh, living conditions and everything else mm-hmm. to have for one year of the college would probably be around 60000 to 80000 depending on the, the, the dollars like 60000 mm-hmm. to 80000 depending on the university and the yeah. area which you're staying in because sometimes the living conditions of new york for example might be a little more expensive mm-hmm. so it, that matters as well acha 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 okay 60000 80000 uh and um, obviously like you need to apply for scholarships and stuff so how do you go about that and do you know any oh i actually i actually didn't really go about the process of applying for scholarships because my parents had uh, they had already had the intention of sending me to masters eventually mm-hmm. they've been saving up for me uh, for, uh, for my education for a really long time Achha. they kind of already had this uh, taken care of this aspect mm-hmm. okay that's wonderful um okay so uh, about these uh, international programs like how exactly would they give me a boost and uh, will they help me get a good job and like there is also all this about uh, work permit student visa limitations and all of those things mm-hmm. so could you um expand on those well again this only depends on the college to an extent That's- while some colleges do have more appealing placement statistics and companies mm-hmm. that come to them mm-hmm. at the end of the day i believe that an individual can become a skilled engineer and get placed regardless of their college In fact, a few of the people I know who went to slightly lower-ranking colleges, they were able to avoid a sense of entitlement which they might get from going to a top college, mm-hmm. and ended up earning a way better job than a lot of graduates who went to top colleges. Okay. So they worked really hard despite going to some top colleges. I'm pretty sure you've seen some of the top CEOs even when they mm-hmm. came from Indian universities and went to slightly lower-ranking colleges. They were able to make a name for themselves far more than the several thousands of people who might go to top colleges in India. Uh-huh. like from india to uh, us mm-hmm, mm-hmm. so of course it only matters to an extent i feel like it does depend a lot more on the person mm-hmm. uh, as i mentioned earlier as well i was determined to work on my startup for example or my entrepreneurship goals irrespective of whether i got into a top college mm-hmm. like even if i hadn't gotten into a top college i was still determined to continue working on my skills as an engineer which i'm sure a lot of people are doing even in the more slightly lower ranking colleges and don't get their dream college mm-hmm. or the same goes for top companies as well i feel like once an engineer actually is determined to improve their skills they're going to do it regardless of where they are mm-hmm. like they'll they'll prove themselves one way or the other okay. and as for getting a job in the us you definitely have opportunities to work in the us mm-hmm. and even participate in internships in the us provided that you work diligently during your tenure in uh, during your ms and complete the required credits mm-hmm. which are given by your college mm-hmm. okay 
uh so any like uh, suggestions or something for the uh, juniors and future aspirants uh, yeah i i just like to take a moment to address all future aspirants on one thing regarding my application mm-hmm. uh throughout my college life i've seen a lot of students fixate on attaining specific achievements such as the mm-hmm. highest grades or, or the perfect scores in their respective classes the perfect gre score mm-hmm. publishing papers regardless of how passionate they are about the idea and so on Mm-hmm. um all of these achievements do help the application to an extent mm-hmm. i just like to shed some light on the fact that during my applications i was a low 7.0 with no publications mm-hmm. and the only thing that uh, may have set me apart from the other applications was my eagerness to improve my engineering skills regardless of these achievements mm-hmm. i have participated in internships as well as several online courses and clubs from my first year itself acha um and in order to come up with more engineering ideas in both electrical and computer science Mm-hmm. I participated in a few international competitions as well to see how my ideas fare with respect to others mm-hmm. and I've also worked on re- research ideas which I was passionate about only and because of these research ideas I was even able to consequently bag an internship uh, at an international university mm-hmm. so I I do believe that as long as you're passionate about your skills and you hone your craft without fixating on whether you'll actually get achievements to show for it mm-hmm. the right company or the right college will definitely they'll take note of it Mm-hmm. uh and they'll definitely consider that regardless of whether you publish the paper because i know people mm-hmm. who applied for these colleges who had published around two or three papers or more mm-hmm. and i know people who published no papers and i haven't really noticed much difference in their application uh, status like i've seen people who have published a lot of papers who haven't gotten into any of their colleges which they mm-hmm. wanted to and i've also seen the uh, vice versa where people have okay. not published any papers and haven't really got as many achievements so to speak mm-hmm. which people consider to be the right place to go and the right thing to do mm-hmm. and they've still been able to make a name for themselves or make a place for themselves in their respective domain Achha. so yeah rather than if if i'm summarizing this i'd rather i'd say that um, rather than fixating so much on the achievements uh, mm-hmm. i think that you should just focus on taking as many opportunities as you can in order to improve your skills as an engineer Mm-hmm. I'm sure that the right company or college will take notice of it eventually, mm-hmm. as long as you keep improving your craft. Okay, okay. So yeah, that's the note I'd like to leave as a suggestion. Yeah, thank you so much.